Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you humbly. First, I thank thee for granting everlasting salvation to my soul when I was a child, and I pray that those still seeking you find salvation before it is eternally too late. Lord, I stumbled across these uh, old recorded documents of a man you called to preach many years ago. His name is Brother Del Fryman, and he is my father. Lord, I thank thee for imploring him and whipping him to ensure I was taken to church so that I would find you precious to my soul in such a way that it's like a ringing bell that can't be unrung. I know you use my father as a trumpet for you, Lord, as a trumpet for the truth. And that day these documents were recorded, I feel you were speaking through him, as you always do. And I simply ask for guidance so that I may use the intellect you gave me to create a presentation, Lord, that delivers his message, your message, pure, clean, and true. And that it may reach someone, anyone at all, even if it's just one soul. Humbly, I am your child and a soldier for the Lord. Please, Lord, give me the guidance to construct this presentation in such a way that would give glory to you and act as a fleeting light in a dark and demented world. You already know my name, Brother Noah Freeman, and I love you, Lord. Amen. Hi, my name is Dale, and I want to take just a moment to tell you a, bit, a little bit about salvation and what it takes to be saved. Now, I go to a missionary Baptist church, and I know that the church that you go to doesn't determine whether or not you're going to be saved. It's actually an experience between you and the Lord. As you'll notice, I have my Bible open here, and we're over in the Ephesian letter, chapter 2, verse 8. And we want to read just a couple verses of Scripture to you. It says, chapter 8, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So that's just reading chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. If you'll notice, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith. We're going to take the word grace for just a moment. If you'll look in your dictionary, grace is defined as unmerited favor. And what that is, that is getting something that you did not earn. And we want to take just a moment to tell you a little bit about how to be saved. Now there's many religions out there in this world today that will have you do a certain type of work uh, you may have to go down to the water to be baptized uh, you may try to do good works all your life just try to do the best that you can and I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now you can go through your whole life and you try to do the very best that you can you can go to the water and be baptized but first, you've got to have salvation. If you haven't got salvation, all these good works will not be recognized by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There will be people on that day that said, they'll say, Lord, did we not do all these things in thy name? And did we not help people? Didn't we do this and didn't we do that? 
And the Lord's going to look them straight in the eye and say, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. For I know you not. So I just want to simply tell you right now, you can't work your way to heaven. You can't, you know, you don't, and this is not going to sit well with a lot of people, but you do not have to be baptized to enter into heaven. God intends for you to be baptized, but before you can be baptized, you got to first be saved. And as I said earlier, salvation is an experience between you and the Lord only. Now don't get me wrong, I'm thankful for our churches. I belong to a missionary Baptist church and I'm thankful for it. Because that's where I heard the gospel. And you cannot be saved without hearing the gospel. But I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you my experience of salvation. When I was just a little boy, we went to church one night to hear a cousin of mine preach. And as we was there, you know, he preached. The church was going on, and I had an older sister, and she didn't want to go. She didn't want to go because she was lost and without God. She was in trouble. She was convicted, convicted by God. And, and let me tell you another thing. When you become old enough to become accountable, and I don't know what that age is. It's different for all people. But there'll come a day in your life, in your life where you'll become accountable. And as soon as you become accountable, you'll become lost. You'll be lost. There won't no man or woman have to tell you. God will let you know, and you'll feel it in your heart. Well, my sister was lost. She went to church. Uh, she told Mama she'd go, but she wouldn't listen, but she went. She heard the gospel. She got in trouble. She got down, and she started crying and begging God to save her soul. And just like that, the change took place. He reached down, took out that old stony heart, and gave her a heart of flesh. She became saved. Now me, I was a little bit younger. I was four years old, younger than my sister at the time. And I saw her get saved, and, and my cousin, he was saved. And then all of a sudden, something didn't sit well with me. That's the day that I became accountable. That's the day that the Lord convicted me of my sins, and I became lost and undone. And it bothered me. Now, I don't remember much between that day and the day that I got saved, but I can remember the day that the Lord gloriously saved my soul. I was living in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Uh, we was at home, and I can remember my mother was either cooking in the kitchen or cleaning. I don't remember, but I just remember sitting at the kitchen table and talking to her. <clears throat> and I just think they remember asking, I said, Mama, where would you go if you died? And she said, oh, honey, I'd go to heaven. Well, I said, how about daddy? Would he go to heaven? I said, how about Beverly? That was my older sister, and she had just gotten saved recently. Did she go to heaven? And I had a little baby brother at that time. He was probably about three, four years old, if that old. And he was too young to have to worry about being saved and that's another thing that is misleading by people uh, when they have a baby they think they have to get it christened if that child dies and it hasn't been christened it's going to heaven <coughs> that's just a bold lie to me uh, a child a baby cannot care for itself and do you honestly think God would leave it in our hands to take that child to uh, be christened that doesn't do anything for the child. If a baby is six months old and Lord forbid something should happen and it die, I guarantee you it'll be in heaven one day after a while. But as they grow, you know, and they grow up and they start to learn right from wrong, there will be a day that they become accountable, just as I was. And getting back to the original story, I didn't mean to get off, but uh, my mother said that my little brother he would go to heaven. And then come the question that bothered me the most. But I had to ask. I said, Mama, what about me? And she said, Honey, I don't know. Well, that scared me to death. When you're a little boy, a little girl, you look to Mama for everything. You get out and you ride your bicycle. You have a wreck, skin your knee, you run to Mama crying, she'll bandage it. 
put a band-aid on it and she'll kiss it and make it all better. But that day my mama couldn't make what was wrong with me better. It had to be the Lord. That scared me to death. I remember getting up from the table and going back in the house down the hallway and we had a little bathroom. I went in there and shut the door. And I went over and I sat on the commode seat. And I was sitting there and I was scared to death. And I started crying out to God. God, please save me. Don't let me go to that awful place. Please don't send me to hell. And I don't know how long I was there. But I just remember screaming out and crying in anguish. I was so troubled. My heart felt like there was a semi-truck sitting on top of it. And I had to have relief. And I kept calling on God and kept calling on Him. And finally, I can remember my hands were over my face. And I pulled them down and took a deep breath. <gasps> and I felt the salvation come into my soul. All that trouble that I had felt was completely gone. I went from crying to laughing. I mean, I felt so much joy in my heart, I couldn't believe it. You know, what had happened to me, I was not afraid to die anymore. My heart was fixed, just like David said in the Old Testament. You know, my heart is fixed. My heart is fixed. And I got saved that day. Now here it is, I'm 45 years old today. This happened about 35 years ago. I can't tell you my exact age, but I can tell you I've been saved for about 35 years. And I'm, and I'm still saved today. I know uh, a lot of times the Missionary Baptists, people want to say, look down upon us because we say that once saved, always saved, but the Bible can back that up. The Bible says when you, are, when you become a child of God, you're born of incorruptible seed. What does that mean? If God says something is incorruptible, if he makes something incorruptible, all the, you can do anything in the world you want to, you cannot corrupt it. I've done a lot of bad things in my life. I've got out in the world, I've partied, I've done things I shouldn't have done. But all those times that I did that, I was still under God's care. I was still a child of God. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you to get saved and run out and do live like the devil. Because we believe once you get saved, you become a child of God, then you do things that are wrong. You intentionally go out and you get out and drink, get drunk, run around with different, many different women. If you've been saved, you're going to pay for it. You will be punished by God. God's a loving God, but He's also an angry God. And when we do not do the things He asks us to do, He punishes us. But that is what salvation is. is peace with God. And I didn't do what any man told me. I heard the gospel. And they'll direct you, they'll point you in the right direction. God's people will tell you that you need to pray. And if you're at a church and it has an altar, and I love altars, go to that altar, bow down, and call on God. But if you do, if you get into trouble and you're under conviction, you may be watching this video and the Lord may prick your heart and you feel lost and without God. If you do, you can be saved right now. Right now you can be saved. All you got to do is call upon the name of the Lord. If you're troubled and all that troubles in you, you beg Him. You beg God until you know you're saved. And when you get saved, you won't gradually feel better. When you get saved, it's instant. When I got saved, like I said, I went from crying to laughing in a second. That's salvation. The Lord came into my heart and He cleaned me up completely. That's what salvation is. And getting back to what we said here in the Bible, Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace are you saved through faith. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. That's what salvation is. And I'm thankful today that I'm saved. I'm thankful today that my wife has been saved. I'm thankful that my son is saved. 
I'm thankful for all those who have been saved. And my prayer today would be that if you're out there and you're lost and undone, and you see this message, that it may touch your heart in some way, cause you to realize that you're lost without God. But I want to tell you something, there's a way out. There's a way out. Don't wait too late. You can leave here today, drive down the road, and be in a bad car wreck, and leave this world. And if you're lost and without God, hell would be your home. But if I was to go out this afternoon, and if I was in a bad accident, it would be sad on my family. But don't worry about me. But if something should happen and I lose my life, I guarantee you, I'll be in glory forever and ever. I hope you may have got something out of this message. And I thank you for listening.